there is no legal basis for trusting the reviews on Yelp, and there is no logical basis for trusting them either. This, according to eastbayexpress.com. And the only thing I use Yelp for anymore is when I go to a business, I check to see if they have any specials on Yelp. That's what, because I'm cheap. Don't ask me why I think of you, I might not give the answer that you want me to. Hey, Jeff, what are you doing? Oh, Wells. About 1.5 million people in the state of California rely on private wells for drinking water. This also, according to eastbayexpress.com. And 90% of the domestic water supply in the San Joaquin Valley comes from aquifers. But due to extreme drought and excessive groundwater pumping, the water tables in the southern central valley have receded at alarming rates causing hundreds of wells to go dry and cutting off some areas of the state from running water. Well diggers in the San Joaquin Valley now are in high demand as farmers rush to access deeper groundwater. For the first time in history, we have entire segments of communities losing access to their water supply. Although the drought is partially to blame for the water shortages, the problem has been decades in the making. The San Joaquin Valley's underground aquifers support millions of people and a multi-billion dollar agriculture agricultural industry, but the state doesn't monitor or regulate the resource. And for the past 150 years, groundwater basins have been considered a property right, meaning people can take the uh, whatever water that they can pump from beneath their home or farm. We have been using groundwater like an unlimited bank account. The problem has worsened during the drought because farmers use groundwater to make up for water cutbacks from other sources. This year, as state and federal water deliveries have slowed to a trickle, the San Joaquin Valley farmers are expected to increase the amount of water pumped from the ground by 4.1 million acre feet. That's enough to put the entire state of Delaware under two and a half feet of water. If present trends continue, the San Joaquin Valley's once abundant aquifers could become largely inaccessible within a generation due to the increased cost of pumping water from further depths. Those dependent on personal wells receive very little aid from the state of California when their water runs out, forcing them to develop patchwork systems to access water supplies. Some people run pipes into their neighbor's wells to tap water. Others fill up jugs at water tanks and others use uh, get the wa- bottled water, which of course is a drain on our environment because of all the plastic produced and how uh, much it hurts the environment to make that plastic and to then try to recycle that plastic. Damn plastic. It's not that easy being green. Ah, uh, trying to be green. Having to spin. Richard Kaufman, an ex Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley banker, whom New York Governor Andrew Cuomo appointed last year as the state's first energy czar, has visions of New York as a 21st century clean tech powerhouse. But for now, he admits it remains more than a 20th century energy dinosaur. This according to Fortune.com. To kickstart the process of reinvention, Kaufman has taken some radical actions. Earlier this year, he rolled out a state-owned financing startup with $1 billion in assets. It's called NY Green Bank. The hope is that through strategic lending, the state can give the private sector the incentive to help transform New York State's power system. If it works, the project could provide a template for other states to follow. New York's list of energy challenges is long. It lags behind California and other big states in the adoption of renewables. Last year, for instance, California installed 2,621 megawatts of solar energy compared with New York's paltry 69 megawatts. New Yorkers pay some of the highest electrical bills in the, in the uh, electrical rates in the nation. At the same time, the state's utilities are struggling 
electricity demand is weak and the cost to maintain an aging grid is rising. The price tag simply to keep New York's antiquated grid running over the next decade is an estimated $30 billion. As New York's chairman of energy and finance, Kaufman has the sway and the budget to push for change in almost every aspect of the state's energy system. He is pushing for regulatory reform that would encourage the state's utilities to run more energy-efficient programs and make smart grid investments to reduce load and the need to maintain expensive backup power plants. He also is pushing for utilities to invest more in clean, distributed energy. Other states have tried such measures with only moderate success. Although wind and solar power are growing quickly, their share of the nation's total power generation is only about 4%. Kaufman is hoping the Green Bank can push New York way past that level in coming years. The bank, funded by a surcharge paid by utility customers, aims to help finance clean energy projects throughout the state. When he took the job as energy czar, uh, Kaufman, who's now 59, brought with him a strong belief that the government was lousy at picking winners and losers, like the Solyndra debacle, And he began searching for private sector solutions to the state's energy problems. He says, it's going to be the markets that will give customers what they want. I have no idea what new energy systems are best. Apple, for example, allows outside programmers to make apps for its products because that's the way innovation happens. You open up competition. Oh, speaking of Solyndra, it's nice to see that that building along 880 has finally taken down... The name Solyndra. Uh, It was such a huge sign and a huge billboard for that uh, failed energy department's uh, investment in the solar panel maker Solyndra. And now, happily, it says something else. I think it has something to do with whales or something. I don't know. I need to take a drive down 880 again soon. So that I can go see Santa Cruz. It's just not easy being green As we go outside the last place on earth Where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California And here's today's podcast picture The picture is of the ride That I took today on the brand new Just opened today Connector that goes between BART and the Oakland Airport You can see that all the people there Were squished in the front Going, ooh, let's see, there's no... There's no driver. It's all done automatically. It's driverless. And it's taking us to the airport, hopefully. I'm glad it didn't all of a sudden, like, just take us to somewhere we didn't want to go. Like Modesto. No, Modesto's great. Uh, It's great because I know some people in Modesto. And if I didn't, I don't know if I would go to Modesto. You know, I think all the things I just said there could have been lyrics to a good song. That perhaps, you know, you, Madame Rutabaga, would have liked to have sung. Michael Master, I would never sing any of the songs that you write, because you write weird songs, Michael Master. And why aren't I going to the Christmas third concert with you? I didn't think you'd want to go. It sounds exciting and exhilarating. Ooh. All right, you can get, we'll go together to that. Yeah, can we have a bowl of Cheerios, too? No, definitely not. Next show, another special guest on Into an Interview. We will bring it to you, a special guest. More than likely a musical guest, I'm thinking. Well, maybe. I don't know. I can barely see. I can't prognosticate. I can vegetate. Sometimes I can ameliorate. But it's that's a state. California, the state. We've talked a lot about California today. On today's show So maybe we won't talk about it as much Next show In fact, the people I'm going to be talking to Are not from this state Ah We'll find out who that is Next show And we'll also hear From Shelley Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man And John Deere the Engineer Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced And performed by Mike Matthews His podcast is super easy to find Download or listen to his show And read his blog at Mike'sTVPodcast.com Email Mike now Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Mike, I hope that the brewmaster returns from his sabbatical soon. I enjoy his root beer. 
I enjoy taking the root beer and pouring it on top of Bison Bentley's head. Day. Yeah, it does. It's really pleasant. Do you know that? Ah, 